The day before Christmas, the James Webb Telescope took off from a spaceport in French Guiana, known for having the highest percentage of successful launches at more than 95% since the 1970s, or as a location in Battlefield 2042. The promise of the James Webb Telescope has always been just over the horizon. Since an iteration of the telescope was first conceived in 1989, the road to the launch pad has been paved with cost overruns and technical issues. NASA originally envisioned a launch somewhere between 2007 and 2011, for a total cost between $1 billion and $3.5 billion. But the James Webb Telescope continued to miss one launch date after the next, while its total cost ballooned to nearly $10 billion. With astronomers and science lovers' hopes and dreams being carried to space along with it, it's worth asking. Who gets to control the world's most powerful telescope? A literal time machine into the very early days of our universe's existence. So, who makes the call on where it looks? While NASA put the telescope in orbit, the Space Telescope Science Institute, a consortium of 47 US institutions that operate telescopes and observatories around the world, is the body that chooses who gets to use it. Just as a side note for our video, the Space Telescope Science Institute is a fancy name, but it's a bit of a mouthful, so we'll be referring to it simply as the Institute. The James Webb Telescope was first set to launch more than a decade ago, but the Institute waited a long time before figuring out the schedule for the telescope's first year. Even with all this patience, they did have a few false starts along the way. When it seemed like the telescope would be ready to launch in 2019, the Institute called on astronomers to submit their proposals by March of 2018. Then, just a week before that deadline, NASA announced that the telescope wouldn't launch until 2022. The deadline was abruptly canceled, and after another postponement came in March of 2020, astronomers turned in their proposals by November 24th, two days before Thanksgiving. Then, it was time for the Institute to sift through the 1,173 proposal requests they had received for the observatory's first year of life, known as Cycle 1. The telescope promises the ability to peer into the recesses of the universe like never before. That's because the telescope is the closest thing humanity has ever built to a working time machine. Sporting a 21-foot wide gold-plated mirror, the James Webb Telescope will be able to see infrared light with incredible sensitivity. It will be able to see objects that are 10 to 100 times fainter than what the Hubble Space Telescope can see. If you set the James Webb Telescope down on the surface of the Earth, and there wasn't all this pesky atmosphere in the way, it could detect the thermal signature of a bumblebee on the moon. It will gather light from stars and galaxies located up to 13.6 billion light years away. Light that has taken 13.6 billion years to reach the telescope's mirrors. Since the universe is thought to be roughly 13.8 billion years old, we'll be observing galaxies that formed just 100 to 250 million years after the Big Bang. Our universe was in its infancy then, and the James Webb Telescope will be providing us with the baby photos. To help sort through all the proposals, the Institute created 18 panels with 10 scientists each, tasked with looking over proposals for different areas of space research. To eliminate as much bias as possible, the process was dual anonymous, meaning the people writing proposals had no idea who would be evaluating them, and the people on the committee had no idea whose proposals they were analyzing. As a result, 30% of winning proposals are led by women, and scientists studying for their PhDs also saw more success in getting their ideas approved. The panel ranked their proposals based on three criteria. From the onset, the science had to be nothing short of revolutionary, so the first two criteria the committee looked for was how much the proposal would impact knowledge within the selected subfield and how much it would advance astronomy in general. Obviously, what's deemed most interesting is science that's considered transformational, something that will change your view of the universe. In 1965, two American radio astronomers accidentally discovered cosmic microwave background radiation emanating from all parts of the sky. Now, it was an accident, but what they had just discovered was a faint glow of light that fills the universe, reverberations from the Big Bang and the universe's creation. A few years earlier than that, the Hubble telescope not only discovered that distant galaxies were moving away from us, but the more distant the galaxy, the faster it appeared to be moving away from us. This directly contradicted the belief that physics on a galactic scale acted much the same way as it did here on Earth. If when the universe was first formed, galaxies were thrown away from each other, gravitational forces should have started slowly pulling them back together, but instead, they're racing apart. Rather than shrinking, the universe was expanding. These two discoveries became the backbone of the Big Bang Theory that revolutionized how we see the universe. The Hubble was instrumental in making this, along with many other discoveries, 
And the Institute wants the James Webb Telescope to be just as instrumental in the next wave of great astronomical discoveries. The final criteria the panel considered was whether the proposal really required the unique capabilities of the James Webb Telescope to be successful. The telescope is only expected to remain operational for five to 10 years, so time is incredibly valuable. Given just how many people want to use it, the Institute didn't want to allot time to an observation that could be done with any of the other telescopes currently online. When all was said and done, the Institute selected a total of 266 proposals submitted by scientists from 41 countries around the globe. These proposals are all public, so we actually know a lot about what the James Webb Telescope will be studying. One of the most interesting fields is one that didn't even exist when the telescope was first conceived of in 1989. An entirely new field has emerged, one that revolves around the study of planets outside our solar system. Since the first detection of an exoplanet was confirmed in 1992, We've discovered thousands of these far-off worlds orbiting alien stars. In 2017, astronomers shocked the world when they announced the discovery of an entire alien solar system, consisting of seven planets, all roughly the size of Earth, orbiting around a dwarf star. And three of the seven planets, known as the TRAPPIST-1 system, sit in the star's habitable zone, where temperatures are thought to be just right so that liquid water can exist on the planet's surface. After discovering this bounty of exoplanets, astronomers are eager to find a potential Earth 2.0. But exoplanets are incredibly faint, and traditional methods of detecting them, like watching stars dim ever so slightly as planets pass in front of them, can't tell us what might be lurking on their surfaces. But the James Webb Telescope is powerful enough that it might be able to detect light passing directly through the atmosphere of some alien worlds, and use that light to say what kinds of chemicals are present in the atmosphere. Perhaps it could even detect signs of life. This capability of the telescope is one no one really envisioned when it was first designed, but now it's considered one of the most exciting areas of science that the telescope will touch upon. The Institute allocated the next year of the telescope's life down to the hour, and the project that got the highest number of hours was revisiting a classic. From December 18th to 28th, 1995, the Hubble telescope took 342 separate exposures of a small region in the constellation Ursa Major. These exposures, collectively, would become known as the Hubble Deep Field Image and is debatably the most important image ever taken. Astronomers started by pointing the Hubble telescope toward a seemingly empty spot in the sky. Because the telescope was purposely directed far away from the glare produced by stars in the Milky Way, any sort of light in the resulting view had to come from galaxies. For 10 days, Hubble collected faint light from this extremely small patch of blank space. It was a risky move. Satellite time is hard to come by, and with all the amazing things you can see in the night sky, for 10 days, a team of astronomers wanted to point the telescope at a seemingly empty patch of nothingness. But the image ended up containing thousands of never-before-seen galaxies. And with how small this sliver of space was, the image gave a glimpse at how immense the universe truly is. And because many of these galaxies were incredibly far away, it gave scientists their first peek at what galaxies looked like when they were young. Back to the James Webb Telescope. With a whopping 208 hours, the most of any proposal, a team will be looking back at the Hubble's deep field in even higher resolution. With the telescope's enhanced capabilities, the team will be imaging galaxies that are even older at even greater detail, creating a portrait of an even younger universe. For the project's first year, roughly 10,000 hours of observing time have been allocated. If you noticed, that's actually almost 14 months worth of time but the Institute purposely over-prescribed the telescope's time to account for any projects falling through. They'd rather have too much to do than get to the end of the year and then run out of observations to make. About 6,000 hours were given to scientists who submitted proposals from around the world, while almost 4,000 hours were set aside for scientists who helped design and build the telescope and its instruments. The Institute also set aside 460 hours for early release observations. Images taken in these initial hours will be the first to be made public. But as for the very first observation the telescope will do, NASA isn't sharing. They want it to be a surprise. The Institute is also planning to carve out time for targets we don't know about yet. These are events like supernova, the explosive death of a star, or the merger of two particularly dense stars that send out immense gravitational waves. If astronomers spot a particularly noteworthy event occurring in the sky, the telescope operators are prepared to reorient the schedule so they can quickly observe the aftermath of the event. If everything goes well with the telescope's launch, NASA plans to conduct at least five and a half years of science with it, and hopefully up to 10. Ultimately, the observatory's lifetime is dictated by its fuel reserves, which are needed to help reorient the telescope in space. Whenever that fuel runs out, 
the mission will end. Once it reaches its home 1 million miles from Earth, the James Webb Telescope will undergo six months of commissioning, when scientists meticulously test out the instruments on board, before the real science begins. Hopefully all goes well, and the James Webb Telescope provides us plenty of science for years to come. If you like this topic, check out our videos on the largest object in the universe and what life could look like on alien worlds. And remember, there is always more to learn.